the 2023 union budget the first budget in amrit kal that's how finance minister nirmala sitaraman began her speech on 1st february while presenting a budget that came amidst various economic challenges with the government finances being tight and debt rising due to the various social welfare schemes during the pandemic fiscal consolidation was expected to be the broad theme of this year's budget however with the year having as many as nine state assembly elections and being the last full-fledged budget before the 2024 general elections there were also expectations of the government possibly adopting a populist route but with this union budget the government has ensured continuity on the fiscal consolidation path with industry leaders lauding it for striking that fine balance between growth and fiscal prudence now majority of the finance minister's speech uh, revolved around seven key priorities termed as saptarishi focusing on inclusive development reaching the last mile infrastructure and investment unleashing the potential uh, green growth youth power and the financial sector these seven priorities encompass big announcements that made the headlines including the outlay for capital expenditure at rupees 10 lakh crore which is 33% more from the previous fiscal and roughly double of what it was in FY22 as usual a big thrust on important economic and social sectors such as agriculture health and education the focus on these three sectors was uh, more on technology and skilling to facilitate job creation at scale uh, in line with its net zero targets and prime minister narendra modi's vision for uh, life or lifestyle for entertainment the budget focused on provisions towards green growth with rupees 35000 crore allocation for energy transition and also focusing on energy storage projects and renewable energy evacuation the msme sector which is often neglected so getting various reliefs including the revamped credit guarantee scheme however the star of the day were the announcements related to direct tax proposals with the limit of taxable income for claiming a rebate being increased from rupees 5 lakh to rupees 7 lakh under the new tax regime uh, also slab rates have been widened with a lower tax rate with basic exemption limit proposed to be increased from rupees 2.5 lakh to rupees 3 lakh and staying on the path of fiscal consolidation the budget has estimated the fiscal deficit to be 5.9% of the gdp and targets it below 4.5% by FY26 BW Business World was on ground on the budget day interacting with industry leaders here in as to what they have to say on this budget and the fine balance that the government has struck between growth and fiscal prudence i think uh, the budget is uh, aligning with the g20 mandates also so if you see there is a huge focus on infrastructure development decarbonization green growth and uh, actually from industry perspective one thing which probably got unnoticed was on dispute resolution right because there is so much of uh, disputes at the uh, level during the covid the projects are not completed on time etc etc so that dispute resolution we have the resources thing once we get the detail and if it's uh, with the same spirit as before i think that will be a great enabler for the infrastructure sector yes there is a, a reduction in income tax rates that hopefully will will drive and fuel consumption um which will lead in turn to greater um capacity utilizations there and therefore benefit the economy overall um but i think it is a a task where the government has got has been in a difficult spot trying to balance this and given the very clear or very difficult task that they have had i think they have managed to do that admirably I really appreciate the government for reducing the target for the fiscal deficit coming to 5.9%. It's it's actually going well in track. I think we should be able to achieve 4.5% fiscal 
fiscal deficit planned in FY26. Also, the GDP growth uh, is, is moderated, is good. I think we, we should be able to expect uh, about, say, 7%, as you said. We should all work very hard to make it possible. It's always a very difficult balance because you have to, government has to earn revenue. At the same time, uh, the middle class wants uh, to be able to uh, spend. So, consumption, more hands, more money in the hands of people means greater consumption, which means greater purchasing of goods and services, which means it's, a, it's an accelerator for the economy. I think the government has done as well as it could have put more money into people's pockets. That drives consumption expenditure and that drives growth as well. So going forward, as final details emerge and the budget is more deeply analyzed, there are three broad areas to look for. First, the government has given a clear message that the era of exemptions in the older tax regime is drawing to a close. The new concessional tax regime has been made the default tax regime. However, there is an option to choose uh, the older tax regime, but taxpayers will be closely assessing the net benefits of both the regimes. Second, with the absence of a total fiscal blowout in this budget, as many experts have described, and the recent drop in inflation coupled with moderating growth, will the RBI slow down the pace of rate hikes as it meets post-budget? The US Federal Reserve has slowed down its pace of rate hikes in its February meeting. And third, whether this large outlay of capital expenditure of Rs 10 lakh crore will spur in the private sector to crowd in, which will become crucial for the medium-term growth prospects. We'll bring more to you on these aspects. Until then, keep reading and watching BW Business World.